<laughs> so, God, it's an awfully a wonderful thing to have to do today to be able to take my shiny bald head and for us to be do medical education here. It is. And the most fantastic thing is that things like Zollinger Ellison, because that's what this section is, this short section on Zollinger Ellison. You see, that's why things get away from using eponymous names like Zollinger Ellison. And, I, you know, I put them down because Zollinger and Ellison did a, like a buttload of work for this stuff, and I don't think we should forget their names because that means gastrinoma. And those G cells make increased gastrin. And increased gastrin makes increased acid. Now, I told you before that acid by itself does not cause ulcers. It doesn't. Acid by itself does not cause an ulcer. However, when you have this massive outpouring of acid and you have an increase in gastrin, that's enough to make you have ulcers that are really large. Did you know that most ulcers are under one centimeter? These are ulcers that are over one centimeter. Most ulcers are under one centimeter. These are ulcers that are over one centimeter. Most ulcers are single, but Zollinger Ellison has multiple ulcers. Most ulcers are single ulcers. You know, when I was a medical student resident, I was a medical student resident just at the time that uh, Helicobacter pylori had been discovered to be the cause of ulcers in the 1980s. And every one of my attendings was shocked to think that ulcers had become an infectious disease. Because People like, what do you mean infectious disease? An ulcer is from acid. But it's not. But Zollinger Ellison syndrome is an exception to this because there's such a large outpouring of acid that it overwhelms the pancreas. So remember that the pancreas, although you think that the pancreas makes insulin, only 1% to 2% of the pancreas is an insulin-producing organ. 80 to 90% of the pancreas makes bicarb-rich fluid to be able to neutralize that acid. So when you have a gastrinoma known as zollinger ellison syndrome, you have large ulcers, multiple ulcers, ulcers that are distal, because meaning that most ulcers are in the first part of the duodenum. The first part of the duodenum is right after the pyloric sphincter. And these ulcers are out near the ligament of trites. So when you have ulcers that are near the ligament of trites, you have a serious problem. Why you got ulcers out there just You shouldn't have any of the ligament of trites. You shouldn't be having them in the third and the fourth and the third and the fourth and the third and the fourth part of the duodenum. And the other thing is, is that when you treat Helicobacter pylori, you treated Helicobacter pylori. You gave a proton pump inhibitor and two antibiotics, clarithromycin and amoxicillin. You gave two antibiotics like metronidazole and tetracycline. You gave bismuth subsalicylate. Why did it recur? Why did it come back? Maybe you have to switch antibiotics you switch antibiotics and it still recurred? Why are you recurring? Why is it coming back? You shouldn't be coming back. You have ulcers that are large, recurrent, distal, and multiple, large and recurrent, and distal, and multiple, large and recurrent, and distal, and multiple, large and recurrent, lions and tigers and bears, oh my, large and recurrent, and distal, and multiple. And by the way, you can't watch this course unless you watch The Wizard of Oz. I have three required movies for you. One is The Wizard of Oz. Number two is The Princess Bride. Number three, of course, The Star Wars Trilogy. These are your three required movies to be able to watch our courses here. If you have large ulcers, multiple ulcers, distal ulcers near the ligament detrites, and you recur even after you switch the antibiotics, you most likely have Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. And Zollinger-Ellison syndrome can be defined as simply an increase in gastric acid and an increase in gastrin. 
What's the most common wrong answer? The most common wrong answer says a person comes in with an ulcer. That person comes in with an ulcer and they go on a PPI and they're fine to have an increased gastro level. And they have a, on a PPI and an ulcer and they have an increased gastro level. And your answer is it means nothing. It means nothing. It means nothing because everybody on PPI, everybody on a low PPI has a low acid production and low acid production raises the gastrin. Low acid production raises the gastrin. So you're on a PPI and everybody with a PPI as a low acid raises the gastrin. This is not a zollinger ellison syndrome. zollinger ellison syndrome is a high acid and high gastrin. The same way a high T4 and a high TSH, that is Graves' disease. The same way a high cortisol and a high ACTH level is Cushing's syndrome. The same way a high glucose and a high growth hormone level is acromegaly. The same way a low glucose and a high insulin level is insulinoma. Insulinoma, Graves' disease, Cushing's disease, because failure of feedback inhibition is a disease. Failure of feedback inhibition is a disease. Okay, what if you're not certain? If you're not certain, you should be given secretin. And secretin, secretin, IV secretin. Did you know that secretin is the first hormone ever described? Most people don't know that. If you give IV secretin, what should be the normal response in a person with IV secretin in their acid? A normal person should have a decreased gastrin, decreased acid, decreased gastrin. But a person with zollinger ellison syndrome will continue to have a high secretin level. Secretin shuts off acid. High secretin and a high gastrin level, that is zollinger ellison syndrome. Now, if you have local disease, Local disease can be surgically resected. Cut it out. Surgical resection. But metastatic disease needs lifelong proton pump inhibitors. So how do you know? You go, look, I'm not, I have a high acid and a high gastrin. I think you have zollinger ellison syndrome. Okay, what if I'm not sure? I give IV secretin. IV secretin. Normal person should decrease the gastrin. A normal person should decrease the acid. That's what secretin does. It should decrease the gastrin, decrease the acid. Decrease the gastrin, decrease the acid. What if you don't decrease the gastrin? What if you don't decrease the acid? It's zollinger ellison syndrome. Well, local disease gets resected. Metastatic disease needs a lifelong proton pump inhibitor. How do you know if it's local? Ooh, well, we can do a CT or an MRI, but the other thing is endoscopic ultrasound or a nuclear somatostatin scan. A nuclear somatostatin scan. How do I know if the disease is local? Because the endoscopic ultrasound, I put an endoscope in your guts, and I look inside to see if you have any lesions in there. Endoscopic ultrasound shows that you have no lesions. Somatostatin receptor scan shows you have no metastatic lesions. That's how I know it's local. MRI and CT are good. Endoscopic ultrasound and nuclear somatostatin receptor scintigraphy are even gooder. Endoscopic ultrasound. I put an endoscope into your bowels with an, with an ultrasound machine on it. And it tells me, is it local or is it metastatic? Is it metastatic or is it local? And if you have no metastasis, I can recept it, resect it, cut it out. Nuclear somatostatin scan. zollinger ellison syndrome gives you somatostatin receptors everywhere. And if it's negative, it's local. 
And if the endoscopic ultrasound is normal, it's local. And if it's local one place, I can cut it out. Endoscopic ultrasound tells me if it's metastatic. Nuclear somatostatin receptor scintigraphy tells me if it's metastatic. Last point. I want to be able to know whether I should look for multiple endocrine neoplasia. So what I do is I look for hypercalcemia, for parathyroid hormone. When should I go looking for multiple endocrine neoplasia, hypercalcemia, parathyroid hormone? When should I go looking for men when I have something that affects the bone? When should I go looking for men? Okay. So to summarize, see, Zollinger Ellison is a short, short section, but tough. First of all, everybody on a PPI has a high gastrin because PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, shut off acid. Acid is the feedback inhibition on gastrin. So everybody on a PPI has a high gastrin. So if you have a high acid and a high gastrin, you likely have gastrinoma. When should I go checking gastrin levels? When you have ulcers that are large, recurrent, distal, and multiple. Large and recurrent and distal and multiple. Large and recurrent and distal and multiple. That's when I should look, go looking for gastrinomas. High acid, high gastrin. What if it's equivocal? I'm not sure. IV secretin. IV secretin should shut off gastrin. IV secretin should shut off astrin, shut off gastrin. Okay, I didn't shut off gastrin. I know I have zolandrelosin. I know I have zolandrelosin. The next step is, is it local? If it's local, cut it out. If it's metastatic, lifelong proton pump inhibitors. How do I know for sure it's local? The problem is, is that CTs and ultrasounds and MRIs are shitty tests. They, don't, they miss half of them. Endoscopic ultrasound and nuclear somatostatin receptor scintigraphy. If you have normal endoscopic ultrasound and normal nuclear somatostatin test, it's local. If it's local, cut it out. Cured. When should I go looking for multiple endocrine neoplasia? Hypercalcemia. Tell me I have hyperparathyroidism and I go looking for multiple endocrine neoplasia. Those are the answers to the questions. It is a beautiful thing to be able to study the art of medicine, isn't it? It's a beautiful thing to be able to immerse ourselves in the beauty, like the Sufis, like Rumi and Hafiz Shirazi say, it's the invisible rain that's coming down all the time. Invisible rain. The master of the universe is arranging all the affairs of the world while throwing wild parties in a treehouse and a limb in your heart.